So now let's look on the next subchapter and look, let's look at the materials that you could use or that are being used to produce these solar cells and therefore to produce the solar panels. So the first one is the thin film material. So it's a very thin layer that can be applied to many different kind of materials. And you might have come across the thin film solar cells and solar panels in these, the ones that are fully uh, flexible. So you can roll them up in a very tight ro uh, roll in a bundle. So not like, I'm not talking about the ones that you can bend a little bit, but the ones that you can really roll up. Or you might have seen them in some of the old school uh, calculators, you know, the small calculators that have a very small um, solar panel, solar cell in the, one of the top corners, that's also normally the thin film solar material. Now, as we're looking at the different kind of material options that you have for your solar cells and for your solar panels, I think it will be important, it will be valuable to know what the kind of efficiencies are that you can expect for the different kind of materials. And for now, just remember that the efficiency value lies between zero and 100 percent and the higher the overall efficiency of the solar cell the better right We're always trying to get a really as high as possible efficiency from the solar cells and solar panels um, we'll dive later on in this topic we'll dive later on what efficiency actually are how they're being calculated and what it means for you for now just remember between zero and 100 and the higher the better so for the thin film material the the overall efficiency, the maximum overall efficiency that you can expect from a solar cell is at the moment 24%. So that's the, the first material that I want to discuss. The second one is the group of the crystalline materials. That's the monocrystalline, polycrystalline, etc. Um, this is the material that at the moment is um, the most frequently used type of material to build solar panels. And the maximum, at the moment, the maximum efficiency that you can expect within the, the group of crystalline materials is 28%. So this 4% extra efficiency of the solar cell is something which is normally a huge advantage, right? Uh, so most of the times, uh, for the majority of the solar panels, we're using the crystalline material um, because it's, well, there's several reasons. It's more affordable, uh, you're getting the higher yield, it's easier to produce, etc. But the thin film, you would use it for example because uh, it's ultra flexible you need to have it this flexible you know if you're going backpacking and you want to roll up your solar panel and put it in your backpack um, so then you would use the thin film material now the next material is gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide can give incredible performance yields it is an incredible uh, overall efficiency boost compared to the thin film and the crystalline materials because you can get up to 36 percent in overall efficiency from gallium arsenide all right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. So the reason why you probably won't be using gallium arsenide uh, is because at the moment it's still incredibly expensive. So if you would have an absolute limited amount of space and you don't care about how much you're paying for your solar cells and solar panels, then you might want to consider gallium arsenide, for example, for special um, solar race projects or for really specific conditions where you say, I want to have the maximum amount of yield uh, for a very small amount of service, you might want to go for gallium arsenide. My bet is and that in your situation, and this is almost always true, it is way more profitable to just install a few more panels uh, from the crystalline material as compared to spending 10, 100 times more on your solar panels and going for the gallium arsenide. Now, the next one and the last one I want to mention are the multi-junction type of solar cells and solar modules. So here it's the same story as with the gallium arsenide. You can get even a higher yield. You can get up to 45% which is really amazing at the moment. This is the highest yield you can get from any photovoltaic cell. Um, but they're more expensive again than the gallium arsenide. So only situations where money actually has no importance in the general decision process of for what kind of PV cells you're going for, um, people would want to choose for the multi-junction. So for, for example, on satellites. Satellites normally have multi-junction solar cells installed. Now, I thought it was just interesting for you to know which kind of materials are out there in the market, but it is most likely that you will go for either way the thin film or for the crystalline materials. And based on the assumption that you are grid tight stationary, I think you will go for either way the mono or the polycrystalline materials. 
Um, so the, the second two, I just want to mention them, but it's very, very unlikely that you'll ever go for them. Okay, since you're now aware of the, the two terms of overall efficiency, the overall performance factor of solar cells, I want to take a small sidestep and also look at the efficiency. I'll explain a little bit about that. And I want to look at the uh, crystalline material specifically, because I think this is probably what you'll be using for your system. And I think it will be interesting for you, for you to know a little bit more about it. So you know by now that the efficiency is expressed with